Hey everyone, it's Pam, and I'm here with my monthly update video letting you know everything that I was up to in the month of November. So November was a pretty decent month. I was very happy to finally get my Loom video finished up. Um, I'd been working on that one for many months, played it probably at the beginning of the year and started researching, and finally buckled down, finished the script, got it all edited, and edited the video together, which was a very long edit since it was almost 25 minutes, which is a bit longer than I usually do, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If you haven't yet seen my video about the development and story of Loom, please check that out. So in November, I guested on two very fun and very boozy podcasts. The first one is from the YouTube channel, Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and it is their Power Hour podcast with Brian and Jim, and it was a ton of fun. I had some beer, I had some cider, we talked about um, what we were drinking, we talked about the new Xbox, we speculated about Bloodlines 2, and also talked about some like copyright trolling within the liquor industry that was going on. I had a lot of fun. Um, I drank a lot. The end of that podcast got a little fuzzy, but it was super fun. Uh, I had a really good time. You can check that out either on audio on whatever podcast um, podcatcher you use, or you can check out the video version over on their YouTube channel called Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and I will link to that in the description. And then the second podcast that I was on is called Petey's Power Hour. This is a great podcast hosted by Michelle that combines um, tasting and information and history of different kinds of wines and spirits. She is very, very knowledgeable about these topics. When I went on, we talked about Riesling, which is my favorite kind of white wine, and we tasted both a dry and an off-dry Riesling, just sort of like compared them and then talked about the history of the wine, and it was a lot of fun as well. I learned some new things. I had a lot of laughs. You can check out that. Again, the title is Petey's Power Hour. So now we will move on to pickups, and I did get a few exciting new things. The first as you might have guessed, is an Xbox. This box is gigantic. It's not actually in here because it is downstairs hooked up to my TV, but I did get to the new Series X. Um, is it worth it at this moment if you already have the last generation of Xbox consoles? Maybe not. Um, there's honestly not a whole lot of new stuff to play on the Xbox right now. However, I really like this system. It's very, very fast. Um, they haven't changed the interface much, which I really like. And I can pay, play four generations of video games on this one console, which I really, really like. So I've been using it a ton. I just haven't been using it a lot to like play new releases that have come out, but uh, playing lots on Game Pass, I've been playing through like Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom and some other things, so having lots of fun with it, but honestly excited to see something that's actually developed for this new generation to come out and see what it can do. So yes, that was my first and biggest pickup for November. I also picked up uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. This is the second one in the series. The first one was Man of Medan, which I honestly wasn't a big fan of. Um, the characters in that kind of sucked, but I just loved Until Dawn so much, and I have more than a little hope uh, for this one that it will be a better setting and have better characters. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. I would like to try playing it co-op because I feel like that would be a better experience than going through it alone like I did with Man of Medan, but haven't got around to it yet, so maybe later this month. I also just needed to get a few little things for my um, Sega CD. My XI and I were parted for a short amount of time, but it is now back home with me, but I did need a new SCART cable so that I could um, connect it to my newer TV. So I got this Insurrection Industries RBG SCART cable, and then I also needed a new controller, so I just got this Genesis six button arcade pad to go with it so that I can actually play on my XI now. And just a couple little pickups. Um, someone requested that I play Golgol 13, so I got that. Um, I always get the name wrong, Golgo. I always think it's like 
Gogol? I don't know. I always pronounce it wrong, but I got this. Um, looking forward to trying this. And then uh, Petey, or Michelle, whose podcast I just guested on, she wouldn't stop talking about Final Fantasy Tactics and how good it was, so I picked up Final Fantasy Tactics. I am a fan of the PS1 RPGs, and this is one of the Final Fantasy series that I never tried, but I do love my tactical games, so hopefully I will love this as well. So now we'll go on to what I've been playing, and I went through a few games in November that I completed. The first game is called Inmost, and it is sort of a puzzle platformer. It's got a little bit of a Metroidvania thing going on with a very sort of somber and sad story. You play as three different characters um, sort of making your way through the world with these sort of interconnecting storylines. The first and sort of main character is a guy who can just, you know, he can run and jump and, you know, do platforming and stuff. The second one is a young girl who can't really do a whole lot in terms of movement and she's more about exploration. And then there is a third character who's a sort of knight who uses like this hookshot thing to repel places and he can fight monsters where the other characters cannot. And it was a very nice game. It was really fun to play. I liked the puzzles. I really, really liked the aesthetic of it. It's all very sort of dark and sort of like somber looking and I yeah really liked it. Um, my friends on the Indie Quest podcast, which is another good podcast you should check out, uh, were talking about it extensively so I decided to pick it up. And I was very glad that I did because I had a very good time with it. The next game I finished is Costume Quest. I started this up um, I think on Halloween, maybe the day before Halloween, and then finished it up at the beginning of November. And this is just a very, very cute game. It's like a very light RPG where you play a collection of children going around. They're going out to trick or treat, except some bad things have happened and their monsters have descended upon the town. So you need to both do trick or treating and fight the monsters in a sort of turn-based combat system. You have different costumes that you can build by finding pieces of them throughout the world. And each one has their own kind of different attacks or different abilities for you to use as you're out in the world. And it was just very, very charming. I enjoyed it a lot. It did not overstay its welcome. I also finally finished up Owlboy, which is one that I started a few months ago. Uh, Owlboy is very cute. It was recommended to me as a Metroidvania, which I, I wouldn't classify it as that. I mean, I wouldn't argue with someone if they called it that, but for me it was just more of a puzzle platformer sort of adventure game. It was really nice. Um, I, the, the character Owlboy is very sweet and all of his friends are nice. The action is actually pretty good. Like I really liked flying around and you, you sort of like can pick up your friends who have different abilities. One can just like shoot like this little pea shooter. One can like set things on fire and it's some, there's some good like combat and puzzle solving using those kind of things. And it was very nice. It has a really, really fantastic soundtrack um, that I enjoyed a lot. And yeah, Owlboy was another winner. I've been playing good games until I get to the next one. <laughs> So something that came out that had previously been sort of under the radar for me is a game called Other Side, and this is a roguelike tactical strategy game. It's got like a black and white and red aesthetic. You control these female characters, they're like your daughters, and there's like, you know, one with a shield, one with a ranged weapon, and one with a sword. So there's really only three kind of character classes, and you go and you have to fight monsters with them and the thing about this game is that you can't heal your characters um all you can you have to like sacrifice one in order to heal another and when you do that it also makes their character stronger so that they do better the next time they're in combat and it sounded like a really cool idea but it just didn't work for me um the combination of honestly rather slow turn-based tactical combat with roguelike and having to start again from the beginning a number of times just didn't work for me at all. Um, it got 
quite frustrating. The game was very, very difficult, and I didn't feel like I was ever making any progress. Um, like, it's not like a true roguelike where you lose everything and when you have to start again, but you don't get to hang on to much, at least as far as I got into the game. So, yeah, Other Side, unfortunately, was a little disappointing for me. Uh, it could have been cool, but it was just far too slow. There was even like a turn on fast combat option, but even with that, it was just too slow and too repetitive. And if it had been like just a normal um, tactical strategy, I think it would have been better, but the roguelike element just kind of ruined it for me. I also just recently played Umurangi Generation, which I actually got a key from for the develop from the developer a while back, but it had kind of been buried in my email. Um, so I just redeemed it recently, and I actually really liked it. It is a game. Um, it's a photography game, basically. You have to go and take pictures of various things. You have objectives of what you're taking pictures of, so it might be a picture of a cat, or a photo that has three bicycles in it, or four giant robots, or something like that. So you need to find all of these things and take pictures of them, and as you go, you get more equipment. So you get different lenses, and sometimes you need to use a particular lens to get a picture, and you can um, edit your pictures in different ways, like saturation and tint, you can adjust the focal point, and all kinds of sort of photography things to do. And photography is one of my favorite mechanics to have in a game. I tend to really like any games that incorporate those. I've never been a photo mode person. Um, I don't like messing around with photo modes, but if like you actually put a camera in your character's hands, I really like that. And what makes this game extra cool is the environmental storytelling. There's really not a whole lot in terms of like dialogue or text or like really in your face story, but as you go around these different environments for, on each level, you're sort of learning about what's happening in the world. And it's a lot about um, ecological disaster, and it's very sort of like dystopic. And it's a game from New Zealand, and it takes into account a number of sort of real life things that have been experienced in New Zealand, but puts a bit more of a like sci fi spin on them. And it was really cool. Um, the graphics are very interesting, and the music was really great, and I really enjoyed the game. And the last thing is Phasmophobia, playing a lot more online games with friends. This, much like Among Us, is not a good game, <laughs> like mechanically. Um, I know it's in early access, um, it's just super, super janky, like the animations aren't very good. After you've played a few rounds, you realize like there's not that much to the game, but it's all about, again, just playing with friends, having fun, getting scared. You basically have to go into a house with a party of up to four, and you have various um, ghost hunting equipment, like cameras or like different sensors and things. And you need to get the attention of the ghost, collect different kinds of evidence, and then based on the evidence you collect, you have to guess what kind of spirit is inhabiting the house. So I've played that a few times over the past week, and it's always a lot of fun. Um, it's scary when you get killed. I tend to get killed a lot, like right inside the door to the house. I'm not very good at the game, apparently. But it can be a lot of fun with friends, just like as a game. There's not, there's not a whole lot to it. All right, so that is my update for November. Leave me a comment, let me know what you've been playing, if you have any interesting pickups. I'm actually starting to work on my best of 2020 list, and it's looking a little bit weak, so if there's any games that released in 2020, please make sure that they released in 2020 before you recommend them to me, uh, that you think I should check out that I might not have played, particularly smaller or indie games. Leave me a comment and uh, give me some recommendations. Uh, yeah, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.